We all know calisthenics is known for its amazing skills, ability to control your own body weight, while simultaneously building muscle and strength. But I will say, there are a lot of useless exercises that I recommend you to avoid. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the 6 worst calisthenics exercises. Now, in case you didn't know, I've been doing calisthenics for the last 5 years now. I went from struggling to even hold a handstand, to now being able to do handstand push-ups, barely being able to do 5 pull-ups, and now being able to do a one-arm pull-up. Yes, you heard me correctly. One arm, alright? Now, I'm not here to flex, alright? Okay, maybe just a little bit. But there's some significance in terms of the accomplishments that I just stated. So I will say this. From my personal experience, learning the handstand and one-arm pull-up took a lot longer than needed. And that's mainly because of the exercises that I spent too much time on, which gave me very little return. And if I had focused on movements that yielded greater return, then there's a good chance that my progress probably would have went a little bit quicker. And this then leads on to the first part of this video. The first exercise you want to avoid is going to be the handstand shoulder taps. If you're trying to learn a handstand, I do not recommend you to do the handstand shoulder taps. Man, like the amount of time I wasted on this exercise is like crazy no cap so if you're doing this right now just stop it honestly this movement has little to no carryover to actually learning the handstand or the handstand push-up that being said now if you are trying to learn a one-arm handstand there are some carryover to that but that's beside the point we're trying to focus on two-handed handstand all right for you to learn the handstand with both your hands on the floor the shoulder taps all that really does is just kind of conditions your shoulder strength that's pretty much it okay but what it doesn't teach you is actually how to hold a proper handstand or the mental cues needed to engage the right muscles for whenever you are holding the handstand without the wall but most importantly in my opinion i think there's much better alternatives when it comes to conditioning your shoulders for that proper strength whenever you want to learn the handstand itself for example the simple chest facing the wall handstand this is actually a great way to condition your body and shoulder strength in order to hold the handstand without the wall you're in the exact same body position you're conditioning your shoulders to hold up your weight and if you want to incorporate some balance then you can easily start doing alternating toe touches with the wall and this is where you're slowly allowing one foot to come out of contact with the wall and use the other foot to support to help understand how to balance yourself. This exercise right here is actually a game changer whenever you want to introduce balance to the equation for learning the handstand. So again, do not do the shoulder taps. Instead, stick to the chest to wall handstands and eventually start doing the alternating toe touches. Coming in number two is going to be the L set pull ups or the L pull ups. And this is essentially where you're combining two exercises into one, the L sit and the standard pull-ups. <sighs> Man, I'm not going to lie. One thing I hate is when people combine two compound movements into one, thinking it's going to be saving time and especially thinking that they're going to be making better gains by doing two in one exercises. So I'm going to tell you straight up, it is not effective. All right. So I actually got a comment from somebody in my last video and he said, hey man, what do you think about the L-sit pull-ups and L-sit chin-ups? Do you think that they're more effective, less effective, or equal to normal pull-ups and chin-ups? And I pretty much just said, in terms of maximizing your back engagement, you're better off just sticking to the standard pull-ups, okay? Otherwise, there's going to be a greater chance that your core will give out first before your lats and upper back. And from a strength and hypertrophy standpoint, you're not optimizing the exercises to its fullest potential for building muscle and strength. And of course, if the progression gets too easy with the standard pull-ups, then you can just start adding weight. It's game changer right there. You're going to get some different kind of strength and gains, like no cap. So yeah, just to summarize real quick, if you see people just doing two exercises in one, shit, sometimes three exercises in one, then just know that this is a test of strength or they're just doing it for show. Like it has nothing to do with actually building real strength and muscle in accordance to the exercise like it's just ineffective but for the guy who commented he did mention that he has very little equipment and he uses like a high parallel dip bar so in his case he doesn't have a pull-up bar to hang so him doing the l pull-ups on the dip bar is actually smart right because he doesn't have any other way of training the pull-ups and i would recommend him to train the pull-ups somehow some way versus skipping it entirely but if you are watching this video man i recommend you buying gymnastic rings where you can set it up somewhere at the crib even outside find a tree or a street lamp and get those gains because the rings is going to take care of your upper body like no cap man now the third exercise that you want to avoid are going to be the bench dips. Now, some might consider this a great exercise for beginners getting to understand their body weight strength and, you know, starting calisthenics. But 
I say otherwise. If you do this exercise, there's going to be a great chance that you're going to be messing up your shoulders. All right. Now, if you just look at the movement itself, you're placing your shoulders in a disadvantageous position with an internally rotated shoulder. And the exercise itself will help you learn the parallel bar dips. So instead, I actually recommend to utilize resistance bands if you wanna learn the bar dips, because all this is gonna be doing is reducing the exercise intensity, meaning you're reducing your body weight because of the thickness of the band. So the thicker the band, the easier the exercise will be. The thinner the band, the harder or more closer you are to actually move your own body weight. And it's that simple, man. You're being specific to the movement by training the actual dips on a bar. And secondly, you're putting yourself in a more safer position compared to doing the bench dips, which is like, it's just a no-go, all right? That's, I thought we left that in 2010, like no cap. Also, if you're watching this video and just started calisthenics or looking to know how to structure a workout split, I'm actually offering free consultation calls where I go into detail with people like you, answering a variety of questions, whether you need help with weighted calisthenics, how to mix weights with calisthenics, or just getting to know you all for 15 minutes. That's free game, man. Like, no cap. That being said, the fourth exercise that you want to avoid is going to be the archer pull-ups. Man, I'm not going to lie. I used to be a victim of doing this pull-up variation. But to be quite frank, it's such a low tier exercise because it's a much harder variant of the standard pull-ups and you're not getting that much lat engagement than you think. Rather, you're utilizing more of your forearm muscles and shoulders to actually do the work. But I will say this exercise is cool. All right, You can do like cool freestyles where you're like walking up to the bar, doing like an air walk or so. But other than that, if you want to start implementing a harder variation of the pull-up, and something that's gonna isolate your lats in a more effective manner, just start doing the wide grip pull-ups. All right, it's that simple. Or of course, you can do weighted pull-ups. That's always a good option. Now, Cobra, what if you're trying to learn the one-arm pull-ups? And this actually leads on to the fifth exercise that you wanna avoid. That's gonna be the one-arm pull-up itself. And to be honest, it's gonna be a hard pill to swallow, even for myself too, because it just took me so long to finally get down the one-arm pull-up. And the journey was fun, but to be completely honest with you, in my opinion, and even other calcine influencers too, they seem to agree that there's more drawbacks than benefits when it comes to doing the one-arm pull-up or even just learning it at all. Now, I actually remember in one of Austin Dunham's video, he's an OG calisthenics guy, and he made a video about him explaining how the one-arm pull-up would fry out his elbows. And I had very similar experiences to this as well during my time training it. First exercise I've stopped doing is the one arm pull up negative. In regards to the one arm pull up, that exercise is taught a lot. But the reason why I've stopped doing it is because I got a crazy elbow tendonitis or a golfer's elbow, whatever you want to call it, after doing it for a few weeks, which actually set me back in my training. That is why I believe there are much better alternatives to learn the one arm pull up. Some included the band assisted one arm pull up. Now on my end, I would say I experienced a very similar feedback in terms of like how recovery wasn't really there. It affected performance in other exercises like the way to pull ups or way to dips. So I really just had to sit back and be like, yo, I don't think I'm gonna be doing the one arm pull ups anymore just because it just fries out your elbows too much, especially if you're doing it twice a week or more. Like. I'm not gonna lie. But one big benefit to learning the one arm pull up and actually obtaining it is that you're gonna have insane strength relative to your body weight, like probably beyond it, because you're technically pulling, you're pretty much pulling your whole entire body with just one arm. And if you look at it that way, it does make sense as to why it's such a drawback too, because you're putting all that pressure and weight on one elbow. So you gotta just you gotta just pick and choose, make sure that you're structuring your exercises correctly, not doing too much intense elbow work, like straight arm work, whether it's the planche, um, bent arm work, whether it's weighted dips, weighted chin ups, etc. So if you want to focus on the one arm pull ups, then that's pretty much going to be what you're going to be focusing your entire training on. But if you want to do weighted pull ups, weighted dips, planche, then you gotta just you got to drop something. I'm not going to cap because that's basically what I had to do. So going back to my previous point on the archer pull-ups and why I would say it leads on to the one-on pull-ups as the worst exercises is that people think the archer pull-ups is going to be carrying over to a one-arm pull-up, but it's really not. You're not even doing the same moving pattern. Um, you're not positioning your body the same way that you would for the one-arm pull-up. So instead, I actually recommend to do one-handed pull-ups where you're essentially holding the bar with one hand and then the other hand is holding your wrist. A way to essentially progress is to have your hand that's holding your wrist gradually get closer to your chest to the point where you're able to do the one-arm pull-up without your hand holding anything. So um, if you want to learn a one-arm pull-up, I actually recommend sticking to the one-handed progression. 
other than doing like maybe even better than band assisted one arm pull ups. I think it's just more specific. So yeah, I honestly personally wish I had learned about this progression when I was first learning the one arm pull up because I was spamming like one arm pull up negatives. I was spamming uh band assisted one arm pull ups. But once I got to the point of like being able to do one arm pull up and just only did one handed pull ups for like extra volume work on my volume days, my strength just got much better. But you know, of course the uh the elbow problems was still pretty much reoccurring because of the, the tension. But that's enough of that man. On to my last point in this video. The sixth exercise that you want to avoid is going to be the back facing the wall handstand push ups. I'm sorry but I'm not sorry because I had to put this on the list. Okay. Now don't get me wrong, the back to wall handstand push ups used to be a staple exercise for me, especially as I was building the foundational strength needed for learning the freestanding handstand push-up. One major reason why I put this as a useless movement is because it doesn't really mimic the freestanding handstand push-up as you would think. In most cases, when you're doing this variation, your back will be arched because of the weight distribution from the legs being placed against the wall. So all this exercise will do is establish a very bad relationship with your handstand form and ultimately make the handstand push-up journey much more difficult. Now instead, I actually recommend you to do the deficit pike push-ups. This will position your body in a much more similar way to that of the freestanding handstand push-up. And because of the added range of motion, you're taking your shoulders through more tension, which ultimately builds more muscle and strength. Similar to that, if you want to increase the progress, our chest to wall handstand push-ups. Now, what I love about this exercise is that you're constantly engaging in a posterior pelvic tilt, meaning you're pushing your hips forward and maintaining it throughout the entire movement. Now, this is going to teach you a more correct way of learning handstand push-up and help avoid that banana form, which we don't want to have. But hey, what do I know? If you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to follow me, man. I'm tough in the scout shit. No cap. Cobra Train is up next. Make sure y'all subscribe to him. He's number one out here. He's the toughest fitness guy out here.